Hello guys, I should game plays. I'm Fabio Pisco, and today we have a really, uh, a really great day. Once again, a really great day, sunny day, and we have another great video, which this time it is about how to overclock the RX 570. In this case, the 4 gigabytes version. You can use it also on the 8 gigabyte version, but well, this time 4 gigabytes it is. Before going further, I just want to let you know that you can actually uh, use my RX 580 tutorial to overclock your, your RX 570 8GB. If you want to see the VRAM part, go and watch it. <laughs> go and watch it, because the, the RX 580 8GB tutorial is closer to the RX 578 GB than the the four gigabytes because they have differences in this case uh, the eight gigabytes versions usually have 2000 megahertz as for the stock frequency of the vram of course and the four gigabytes versions have 70 50 megahertz okay once again i have to stress this out every time i make a video and well this is kind this is really really close to the rx 580 video but i need to stress it again this works in every every single RX 570 card, okay? Every single, doesn't matter if it is from Asus, uh, ASRock, uh, MSI, whatever. It works in every single RX 570, okay? As for the rest, I also need to stress that every card is different. You can buy, for example, 10 cards, 10 Sapphire RX 570 cards, like the one I'm using, Pulse, and uh, amongst those 10, maybe 5 of them will reach higher frequencies than the others and maybe just one of them uh, won't reach even the standard the standard OC frequency, um, which is 1400 MHz. So yeah, all cards are different, so take that in mind. As usual, I overclock always with the AMD software. So if you have the AMD drivers installed, just go to your desktop, click on the right button of your mouse, Tau, and this will appear, AMD Radeon software. Click on it, and it will open the main, the home page, the main page, okay? Where you have your recent games played, where you have your recordings, in case you're recording like me, uh, where you can take a screenshot, record the video, etc, etc. But what do you want now? mostly for overclocking and undervolting is the performance tab open it go to tuning you you have the metrics here of course the gpu usage vram usage cpu usage and ram usage but you really want what you really want is the tuning tab okay open it and now you have tuning control automatic manual auto tuning default or overclock gpu Okay, I do not advise the automatic overclocks or the automatic uh, undervolts, okay? The undervolt is kind of okay, but is, it, is not, uh, it is not as precise as the manual overclock, okay? So manual overclock will bring you way better results. I've tested these on Vega cards, on Polaris cards, so these ones like RX 570 and the RX 580, and the manual is always the best, okay? So, tuning control, manual, now GPU tuning, enable, advanced control, enable, VRAM tuning, enable, voltage here, enable, basically, enable everything that you can besides the fan curve, because I, I usually use automatic fan curve, because I have uh, decent airflow in my machine, in my PC case, and uh, the ambient temperatures are, the ambient temperatures are really okay here, so, okay. So, enable. Once again, enable, enable, and yeah, that's it for now. So, once again, the most important thing is here, the power tuning. The power tuning is almost every time the most important thing, and I will, I will explain why. So, in the power tuning, you select how much power your GPU can use. So, for example, it doesn't mean that your GPU will out of the box use more power. But, if the GPU needs to, to pull more watts from the wall to perform better, it will. So, even without overclocking or undervolting, what happens is that if you raise the power limit, your GPU will perform better out of the box. 
okay so even with no settings applied if you just come here and put it to the max in some cards maybe 20 in others 30 and the cards with two two times eight pins will be um 50 percent so just put it to the max and this alone will make your card perform way, way, way better. better. Because in some scenarios you'll have for example your clock frequency going from uh, 1300 to 1200 and then again to 1300 and then to 12, 1250 megahertz for example. So th this alone will stop those fluctuations and you'll have better performance. This is the most important step and it, it doesn't mean that your GPU will out of the box consume more, it just means in fact that it will consume more if it needs to, to perform better of course, okay? Now let's go to the second most important thing which is the core frequency and voltage. Okay, for extreme gaming you just need to mess with the state 7, you have several states from 0 to 7 and uh, depending on the load of the GPU of course and in this case you just need to mess with state 7 to, um, to your heavy gaming or even to some really let's say I won't say low-end gaming but some light gaming the state 7 will be uh, the one used okay so just use it for these cards Polaris cards so RX 570 and RX 580 after testing a lot of these cards, I know from my own experience that the sweet spot in terms of performance, power draw and temperatures and voltage, because voltage will affect the power draw and temperatures, is 1400 MHz. Almost any RX 570 and any RX 580, decent versions at least, will make 1400 MHz easily. Some will even make uh, 1450 or even 1500 MHz. But the 1400 MHz is the sweet spot in terms of, in terms of performance, um, in terms of power, uh, in terms of heat and in terms of performance. 1400 sweet spot. As for the voltage, don't forget every card is different. Every, every card. Okay, so it depends a lot on your card but the usual frequency the usual voltage that you can use with 1400 MHz clock frequency is from 1060 to 1090 1080 or 1090 okay this is the usual frequency that you need to to apply to have 1400 MHz on core okay some cards some cards may maybe how should I say it you may be really unlucky and lose the lottery and you may need for example 1100 1100 millivolts to um, to make your card work at 1400 MHz you may need even a bit more for example uh, 1120 1130 and so on but usually from 1060 to the best cards 1050 1060 to the best cards to the okayish cards up to 1090 or at most 1100 millivolts to do 1400 megahertz on core so basically we have a stock frequency a stock voltage of 1150 and a stock frequency of around 1300 so basically we are overclocking here raising the base frequency and under volting here so we're gonna go in this case my card my card can do 1060 1060 millivolts so in this case we are reducing 90 millivolts these 19 millivolts less will make the card um, consume way less power will make the card uh, generate way less heat and therefore to be more silent so we'll have higher performance less heat less power draw and a more silent card so this is a win-win situation Okay, in this case I'll be using 1060 because my card supports it. As for the other the other states before, uh, so state 6, state 5, state 4, you just need to reduce the voltage to a lower value than the state above. So in the state 7 we have 1060 millivolts, so for the state 6 let's say 1030 millivolts. As for the state 5, 1020 millivolts for the state 4 10 10 millivolts just an example okay 
And this is all for the core. Now let's go to the VRAM tuning. In the VRAM tuning, as I said before, the 4GB... Let me just adjust the microphone a bit, okay? Better! So, as, as I said before, in terms of VRAM, the 4GB versions usually bring 1750 MHz instead of 2000 MHz, okay? And you, well, you can indeed overclock the memory frequency on these 4 GB versions, but what will happen is that in almost every case scenario, if you overclock the, the frequency, the timings will also go up. Higher timings mean higher latency, which will mean less performance. So it is kind of a trade because you are raising the frequency but at the same time at the same time you raise the um, the timings also so the performance gain will be almost zero almost null so it is not that important but if you want to have those numbers uh, you can simply try for example first try 2000 megahertz raise the voltage a bit let's say 950 Take in consideration that the voltage here is not the voltage of the VRAM and it is the voltage of the memory controller, the memory controller that controls the VRAM in your GPU. So uh, you aren't actually messing with the VRAM voltage but instead the memory controller voltage. So if you are running higher frequencies, well, you can also increase a bit the, um, the voltage of the memory controller because it will need it maybe, it will need it maybe to to handle the higher frequencies, okay? So first try 2000 MHz. If you are having errors, if you are having glitches in games, um, reduce it. If not, try again and let's say try 2100. If 2100 is fine, go again and try 2200, okay? Um, in my own experience, 2200 MHz will have almost no gains from 70-50 MHz, okay? So yeah, it is not worth. But one thing that is worth, it is dangerous in terms of, of stability. It won't fry your card, but it is dangerous because your PC may reboot, your PC may not be stable, your games may not be stable. But a really, a really good thing that makes you gain performance is the memory timings. Remember... What I, what I said before, when you raise the frequency, the timings will raise also. Well, you can change that. You, ha you have automatic memory timing level 1 and memory timing level 2. Memory timing level 2 is the most aggressive, so the one with lower timings, which means higher performance. So if you use memory timing level 2, your performance will increase by around 5 to 10%, depending on the case scenario. Um, but maybe you'll have instability, so you have to try it. If your PC is unstable with memory timing level 2, go back to memory timing level 1 um, to make it stable. If it is stable with level 2, uh, let it be on level 2 because, well, it is better. It is better in terms of performance, so yeah. And well, as for the fan tuning, I usually leave, I usually leave my fan tuning on the, um, with the 0 RPM um, option enabled. And here it is all stock, automatic and all stock. I really do not mess with the uh, fan tuning profiles because uh, the fan tuning profiles on, on the Sapphire cards, at least the ones I have, the ones I own, are pretty, pretty damn great. Being it on my RX 5700 XT, my RX 570 or RX 580, or even my Vega 56, uh, usually the, um, the stock fan curve is pretty good, so I leave it on auto. So basically, as for stability testing in the end, um, just, just simply uh, apply these settings. You can download my profile, the link is in the description as always. Uh, for these settings, well, if it isn't stable, first start with the core, the core overclocking, and test if it is stable or not. So try these settings, if it is not stable, raise the frequency, try again. If 1070 is not stable, raise it to 1080 and try again. If it is not stable, raise it to 1090 and try again and so on. This is how it works. After it is stable, just simply go to the VRAM and do the same thing. Try from 7050 
to 200 to 2000 sorry megahertz if it is stable raise it to 2100 and if it is stable raise it to 2200 another thing that you have to see is the memory vram the vram errors okay you can see it using the 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 um, hw info 64 go down to the um, to almost the last tab it is not the last one the one before the last one <laughs> yes that's the tab and you'll have that saying uh vram errors so aim for zero errors if you are overclocking and you have zero errors cool it is stable you may have some errors and you still you may still have a pretty damn great performance but uh, if you have loads of errors it will take processing power uh, of the gpu to correct those errors and you may end up having no performance gain so that's it so guys sorry for the long video but i wanted to explain the best way i could as always the link the overclock profile is on the description you just have to go there download it uh, and to load it, you just go. Need, you just need to go here, profiles, load profile, and choose where you have the profile and load it. Okay, that's how it works. Uh, for for example, my profile is here. See, load it. Okay. Once again, thanks a lot for watching. Sorry for the long video. Hope you really understood uh, all I wanted to explain. If you have any doubts, go to the comment section. Simply go to the comment section. Ask me what you want and I will answer you as fast as I can. And even this community will help you because I know you guys are awesome. So if you have any doubts, comment section. Don't forget, hit like, subscribe and share the video because that really helps a lot. And see you in the next one. Adios.